What's up, bro? So, we got a problem here where we got to figure out when this quotient is less than or equal to zero. Well, I got a technique for that. We going to figure out when each one of the factors of this quotient is negative or positive. So we're going to make a little list of all the factors and then what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the sign of the entire quotient is. You feel me? All right. So how we do this is we put down zero, we put down negative six, and we put down two. Now, why we do all them numbers? You get them by finding what is referred to as the critical points. You take each one of your factors and you set them equal to zero. So x minus two is equal to zero when x is equal to two. X plus six is equal to zero when x is equal to negative six. And x is equal to zero when x is equal to zero. If you couldn't figure that one out, you got a problem and you should withdraw from your class. The next question is, why do we care about these so-called critical points? Well, we can find out when x minus 2 is positive. In other words, when x minus 2 is greater than 0. Well, that is going to happen when x is greater than 2. We can also find out when x minus 2 is negative. Well, that is going to happen when x minus 2 is less than 0, when x is less than 2. So. Our factor x minus 2 is greater than 0, in other words, positive, when it is bigger than 2. When we plug in a value of x that is bigger than 2. Let me correct myself. When we plug in a value of x that is less than 2, we will get a negative. So, in all of these intervals that I have created and separated by these dotted lines, we will have a negative result. What about for x plus 6? Well, when I use a number that is greater than negative 6, x plus 6 is greater than 0. So let me find negative 6 and put positives to the right of it, negative to the left. For x, it is greater than 0 if I plug in a value of x that is greater than 0. Less than zero if I plug in a value that is less than zero. Now you got to really feel me on this one. Knowing when each one of my pieces is positive or negative means I'll be able to figure out whether or not my quotient is positive or negative. Because if I just multiply positive times positive times positive, I get positive. Positive times positive times negative, I get negative. Negative times positive times negative, I get positive. Negative times negative times negative, I get negative. Now, technically, I'm not supposed to be multiplying by the x minus 2's sign, but it gives you the same answer whether or not you're multiplying or dividing. So you can just multiply those all together to figure out what the sign of this is. Well, they asked us when it was less than 0. So, that's asking us when it's a negative. And we can figure out here that it's negative as long as x is less than 2, but greater than 0. Or, when x is less than negative 6. But they also asked us when it was equal to zero because they asked us when is it less than or equal to zero. So when is it equal to zero? Well, x equaling zero, does that work? Yeah, because if I put the zero on the top and everywhere else where I see an x actually, I'll get zero on the top, I'll get negative two on the bottom, but that is zero, that works. Also, if I plug in negative 6, that works as well because, again, I'll get 0 in the top. But if I plug in 2, I get 0 in the bottom. I get 2 times 2 plus 6 over 0. And that's no good. 
So 2 will not give me 0 for my quotient. But 0 and negative 6 will. So my final answer is that I want to include 0 and I want to include negative 6. So I can change my x is greater than 0 to x is greater than or equal to 0. And I can change my x is less than negative 6 to x is less than or equal to negative 6. Now, how do you do this with interval notation? Well, if you want to include the 0, you use a bracket. If you don't want to include the 2, you use a parenthesis. The symbol we use for or is this u, and then I do want to include my negative 6, but I also want to include all the numbers that are less than negative 6. So I do want to include the negative 6, I put a comma in between that and infinity with a negative sign out in front, negative infinity because this will mean all the numbers starting at negative 6 and going all the way out in the negative direction as far as possible so we say negative infinity when we're writing interval notation and technically you can't include negative infinity so I guess that's the reason why everybody uses a parenthesis whenever you get um, an infinity.